Good morning, everybody. Actually, good afternoon, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is Friday, and it's 1 o'clock, and so I am hosting our Facebook Live uh, devotion time. So I'm going to wait a minute or so and see if anybody is on Facebook at the moment and comes to join. Uh, but we'll uh, make this pretty quick because I'm not sure how many people waited around for me since I'm about an hour and 15 minutes behind our normal time. So, For those of you that might be new, we uh, use the Upper Room Devotion, so we take an opportunity to read the scripture that is for today, and we uh, take a moment to read the devotion as well. We have a couple of different prayers, one that begins, one that ends. We take time to reflect on the devotion as well, and so we want to invite you maybe to come be a part of this with us. Most of my friends that are here, they'll leave a comment to say that they have joined, and you are welcome to do so, whether you come um, right now or if you come maybe a little bit later. I'll take a moment to just say hi to some folks. Diane, good to have you today. Glad you're with us. We're going to be reading out of Matthew chapter 13, so if you want to find your uh, Bibles and turn to the first gospel, Matthew chapter 13. Hi Jack and Pat, good afternoon to both of you. Matthew chapter 13 is where we're reading from today. We're going to start with our prayer of illumination. This is the one that we've been using for um, quite a few weeks now. Um, so we'll begin with that. Oh, and by the way, good afternoon, Barbara. Glad you're here as well. All right. Our prayer of illumination is, O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. So, Matthew 13, we're going to read verses 1 to 8 and then 18 to 23. That day Jesus went out of the house and sat down beside the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he climbed into a boat and sat down. The whole crowd was standing on the shore. He said many things to them in parables. A farmer went out to scatter seed. As he was scattering seed, some fell on the path, and birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where the soil was shallow. They sprouted immediately because the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it scorched the plants, and they dried up because they had no roots. Other seed fell among thorny plants. The thorny plants grew and choked them. Other seed fell on good soil and bore fruit. In one case, a field of 100 to 1. In another case, a yield of 60 to 1. And in another case, a yield of 30 to 1. And then down to verses 18 to 23. Consider the parable of the farmer. Whenever people hear the word about the kingdom and don't understand it, the evil one comes and carries off what was planted in their hearts. This is the seed that was sown on the path. As for the seed that was spread on rocky ground, this refers to people who hear the word and immediately receive it joyfully. Because they had no roots, they last for only a little while. When they experience distress or abuse because of the word, they immediately fall away. As for the seed that was spread among thorny plants, this refers to those who hear the word, but the worries of this life and the false appeal of wealth choke the word and it bears no fruit. As for what was planted on good soil, this refers to those who hear and understand and bear food, fruit and produce. In one case, a yield of 100 to 1, in another case, a yield of 60 to 1, and in another case, a yield of 30 to 1. Our devotion writer today is Paul Sillo from Pennsylvania. His focus verse is verse 23. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. And here's Paul's devotion for us today. 
When I read today's parable, I find myself wondering, how can I spread the seeds of faith everywhere I go? We can spread the seeds of faith on any soil and leave the rest to God, but having grown up in a farming community, I can't help but think of farmers when I read the parable. Every farmer I know prepares the soil, clears out rocks and weeds, lays down fertilizer before planting the seeds. The farmer then tends the crops to give them the best chance of thriving. Thinking about planting from this perspective reminds me that while it is important to share my faith widely, I should not be disheartened in some seeds that do not take root. I can leave those to God and focus on nurturing the budding faith of those ready for a deeper relationship with God. Jesus spread his message everywhere he went and included and excluded no one. But like a farmer preparing land for planting, Jesus also invested much time in his first disciples and those closest to him. The parable of the sower invites us to consider how we are planting seeds of faith each day. And the example of the careful farmer invites us to go further. How am I investing in specific people and helping them to grow in faith? We can follow Jesus' example and share our faith with the wider world, but also take time to nurture the faith of those around us. So the thought for the day is how will I intentionally be how I, how will I be intentional in the way I spread the gospel? So as I was thinking about this, a, a couple of things came to mind. Um, last year, Margaret and I were down on the plaza. We had lunch at Classic Cup. We were sitting out on the sidewalk um, outdoors eating and down the street from us was a street preacher and he was up on his little milk crate and he was with his bullhorn and his Bible in one hand and he was you know saying sharing what he thought was the gospel and proclaiming you know um, all kinds of things and, and trying to figure out how to be you know a, maybe a prophet on the street corner in that moment. It is certainly one way in which we could propagate the gospel. Um, growing up as a young person, you know, we used to do some door knocking uh, on Thursday nights. We called it visitation, and we would be able to do that. But um, we didn't always, uh, we weren't always real successful with it, you know. And I think part of it is is um, the lack of relationship. If you think about a farmer and their land, there is a relationship between the farmer and the land. They know that land. They know how to tend that land. Um, when they go to, to take care of it, they prepare the soil. They clear out the rocks and the weeds. They lay down the fertilizer. Then they have to tend the crops as they are growing by very various means to make sure that they aren't infested with any kind of weed or anything like that that bugs aren't all over their crops, all these kinds of things. So there is there is a relationship that's going on with the land. And I believe that the best way that the gospel is spread is by being relational with people. One of the things that we're going to talk about this fall is what does it mean for us to be literal neighbors with the people that live across the street from us and next door to us? Do we know them? Are we engaged with them beyond just the superficial hello when we see them every once in a while? Are we engaged in, in a little bit deeper community and relationship? Are we getting to know their families and what's going on with their families? Are we taking time to, to maybe engage them and pray for things that are going on in their lives? Are we sharing the love of God in very tangible ways? We're going to talk about that because I think that is really the way in which the gospel is spread. We have to be intentional in the ways in which we are living as good neighbors with the people around us. Not just the people that you see on Mondays if you're neighbor to neighbor or the one Saturday a month that you see them at Baby Grace or you know the person that you might encounter periodically here or there. It, we need to do a better job of investing in the people that live right next to us, across the street from us, right behind us, things like that. And so I want us to think about how we're doing that. Are we people who are, are more private and we like our privacy? Or are we trying to figure out how to be a little more intentional as neighbors so that we might share God's love and grace? Let's take a moment to pause and pray. Dear Lord, we ask that you help us to be intentional in ways that we use our gifts to share our faith with others. 
part of that being intentional is how we are good neighbors, especially to those that live near us. So help us to learn these things, be bold about it, and by the power of your Spirit, may we spread the gospel in loving and wonderful ways. And we ask this in Christ. Amen. Well, thanks everybody for being here today. Linda, hello from Montana. Glad that you are having a good vacation. Uh, hopefully, maybe um, you'll be able to listen to this later on, or if it came on. But otherwise, it was a joy to have all of you today. For those of you that come a little bit later, thank you for stopping by as well. God's peace and grace be upon you. I'll look forward to being with you tomorrow for our devotion time and then on Sunday for worship. So come and join us. Otherwise, stay cool, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.